So how has technology helped us combat the pandemic and how will technology change our lives in the days to come? Paul Milgram, it's amazing how this new world of technology has changed everything. We've developed a vaccine in 12 months, which in earlier times used to take 5 to 10 years to develop. And especially the new and wonderful mRNA revolution, it's a whole new world of vaccines. Now you've studied various kinds of technologies closely. Are there other technologies which could help the world and India fight and contain this pandemic? I think they will make a big difference. I don't think it's a matter of, um, I think what people are thinking of when they're uh, suspecting it might not is they're thinking, well, download speeds are already pretty fast. If I have 4G, if you're a consumer user, they'll be a little faster, but so what? But what the big promise of 5G is in all the new uses. Uh, we have the Internet of Things, everything being connected. We, we're we're going to move into an era before too long where there's self-driving cars, and they're going to be able to drive closer to each other because they can communicate uh, right, right. Uh, and, and respond faster. We are going to have, uh, um, you know, there, there's a whole range of our, our – uh, we already have um, – uh, you know, shipments and, and logistics being drastically improved because everything is being tracked. We'll, we'll have time of day pricing for electricity. We'll have all sorts of things where instant communications um, among things uh, make them operate better and more efficiently. And, and that's the promise of 5G. It's, it's not, not so much just faster download speeds for your movies or something. True, the, the Internet of Things is a really crucial part of all our futures because IoT is going to make everything more efficient, perhaps even greener, because you're saving time and logistics, travel, transport, etc. Is that right? Even video conference meetings are helping reduce the carbon footprint. Isn't that right? Yeah, well, that when you were talking about Zoom, that is, of course, another one of the uh, advantages yes. of Zoom, distant meetings, reducing the need for transportation and you know. We, we missed that um, my flying to India and visiting you there, but we also saved quite a lot of uh, yeah. carbon emissions by uh, not having so much of that. So, yeah, yep. yeah, technology should help. Yes, now switching to technology that's closer to home and to our work that all of us have experienced so much in the last uh, year. In fact, all of us are almost becoming addicted to Zoom video meetings. So is this the future, or are we all going to return to physical face-to-face -face meetings again? <laughs> well, you know, um, yes, uh, uh, Zoom is an imperfect substitute for uh, some of the thing, many of the things we do. Uh, when I meet with students, I can't shake their hands. When I meet with friends, I can't hug them. Um, so the, the uh, Zoom just doesn't do that. And Zoom also um, doesn't do the, you know, the occasional informal interactions where you, you bump into a colleague or you walk out of a seminar and start talking about what you've just been hearing. It's, it's only organized meetings that we do over Zoom. Yes. So, uh, so there's a lot lost. But on the other hand, it's, um, there's a lot of things we can do more easily now. For example, I can talk to you in India with, without having to fly for a whole day there and a whole day back and and and, uh, and so those things are changing the patterns of work i think and i think that's going to be a permanent change i think the the um uh, we don't expect video meeting to replace everything but um, we expect it's going to be easier to work with people in more distant parts of the world um we expect that um uh you know areas like Silicon Valley here where housing prices are so high and, and it's hard for people to move. There'll be people who, who work at a greater distance and they'll have the disadvantages we were just talking about, right. but, but it'll be possible for them to work. And, and that's, you know, a continuation of a trend that's been going on that's affected India for a long time. I mean, software, uh, people working in the software industry have always worked remotely to some degree and and that became more and more possible as communications got better. So it's a continuation of that trend. Yes. As you point out, this era of technology is a seismic shift from the past. 